What is the pound in US in Nigeria? What is the what are other currency you're using? If you're using yeah. yen, euro. Yeah. the euro. Well, euro is euro in Nigeria, right? Brand. So that is what's telling you nominal exchange rate. Right, exactly. The nominal exchange rate is the domestic price of your foreign currency. So you're always looking at this dollar in local currency, in the local price. Okay. And therefore, it is the price of one unit of foreign currency expressed in units of domestic currency. Okay. Always look at currency this way. It's always from a perspective of your foreign currency and the equivalent it can it is with your local currency. Because we are a taker, basically. So that's how we normally look at it. Then obviously if you're if you are America it's a different. But here, this is the way we look at it. So one dollar is equivalent to let's say three hundred and forty naira and one pound is equal to four hundred and fifty naira. Okay? Then you have either a fixed exchange rate system, which means then that the central bank has decided that it's going to manage the currency, the price of the currency. So which means then on a daily basis, your value of your currency doesn't change in terms of local currency. If today it was 340, tomorrow it's still going to be 340. That's in a nutshell. There are many other, other things that happen, but the normal fixed exchange rate is like that. And then obviously you go to the extreme other flexible exchange rate where you allow the market, you allow the market to react to many, many other variables, depend, depending now on the number of things. And that's where, for example, you would see that your market going up, your exchange rate going up, your value of your currency going up, going down. Depending not because of that, but because depending on other economic reasons, right? Where you can see that people are react. Sometimes intervention in the local economy, too much money coming in, too much, too much money coming into the country, etc., can have an impact on the exchange <coughs> on your value. Okay. So again, we've done all that. Then, and a fixed exchange rate. If you want to blink. Like uh, normally the IMF or somebody is going to come and tell you, you must do a devaluation. So a devaluation means, what does a devaluation mean? The what? The reduction in purpose for reduction. Yeah, but what nominal exchange rate means nominal? A lot of people don't understand that. What nominal exchange rate is going up means? No, no. I'm saying what is devaluation? The value of foreign currency increases while the local currency increases. On purpose or by the local Yes. And this means that you need less currency to buy one dollar. Yes. Yes. No, How many of you said yes? There must, be, there must have been somebody or some people. Right? No, 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 think about it carefully. That's a trick question. Because every, time I say, every time I do it like that, I get somebody. Because it's not that obvious. So it's always think when you talk about appreciation, depreciation. What is your, what is fixed? What is variable? variable? The fix is my foreign currency, then what is it happening when I say the value? This is why I say your value is getting better, is getting worse. It's subjective against what? The best way to say that I have to pay. So it's becoming more expensive for me to buy my foreign currency. So therefore, the value of my currency, what that means then? If it's becoming more expensive for me to buy, and I need more of my local currency to buy the same one dollar. This means that the value of my currency has gone down. Yes. Yes, so that's the way you can always think of the depreciation and devaluation. It's your value, the value of your currency has been gone down. Because it's worth less. That's why I need more of it in order to buy that same dollar that I was buying yesterday. Yesterday I was buying 340. I need the only 340 naira to buy this dollar. Now today I'm, I'm going to buy 400 naira to buy this So my value must be down. Right? And obviously the reverse. So always be careful about that because as I said, 
it's so difficult sometimes to imagine what are you talking about. Everybody's talking the same thing. But then just to say that my my value is, is going up, is going down. What, 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 what does that mean? Going up means what? Because you might say the value is going up means yes. It's going up from 340 to 500. But that's not really going up. This means your cost is going up. Yes or no? Yes. It's your cost that is going up. You, are, you, are, you have to, with, with whatever pocket money you have or your, your, the money that you have to spend, so then you have less money. And can you imagine if you had put money aside to buy a car, an imported car, what does that do to you? If the car has remained the same, 20000 $20,000, the car hasn't changed. Let's assume that there's no change in price in Germany or wherever you buy this car. But what has happened because of the government policy of uh, evaluation, suddenly now, whatever you were keeping, you were keeping very nicely, say, and you've already made your plan. You've just said that, you know, every, every month I'm going to put 1500 or whatever it is. So then by the end of the year, I will get my 20000 Then December. <laughs> so you can even immediately imagine that you you don't you won't need 340 times right whatever it is you would need much much more in order to get your 20,000. Right? That's the that's the nice way the the, the the individual way but from a government point of view that's where the policy is about. So government of the devaluation is about how to improve the extra foreign trade sector. That's what do. Before I do that, so if you are in a floating, the jargon that they use now for devaluation is not, not a complete devaluation. Because you're talking about across the board devaluation. Here it's more about depreciation of the currency vis a vis that particular currency. And in here now, you're going to see because it's market, the difference between here and here is that sometimes when you do a devaluation, you might realize that the percentage change in general, as well, it's not always the same, in general, because you're doing a devaluation across your currencies. Remember? Yes. You're not talking about a devaluation against the dollar. So devaluation is a devaluation. So you're not, you're not doing anything to the dollar. You're doing anything to your own currency. So when you're doing anything to your own currency, it doesn't mean it remains fixed with one currency or other. It's a devaluation across the board. So it devalues quickly. So then when you look at it, when you do exposed, you know what is exposed, afterwards when you're looking, you might say that the rate of change that it has given is more or less similar, right? The value is different because you're starting with a different value, right? Because 340, 451. So you're not expecting both of them to come 400, obviously, because this is already 451. So it gets devalued by 20%. So you can see 20% of this, 20% of that. On balance, you'll see it's there. But here, this is market. The market, there's not necessarily, the trend will be the same in depreciation. But then it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to see the same percentage across every currency. They will all depreciate, probably, more likely. But then you won't probably be seeing that it's all depreciated by 20%, 40%. For analytical reason, you might say so, but it might move because there may, may be other reasons why. It's also to do with the interest of that currency, the strength of that currency. Like Japanese yen is very strong, uh, what used to be very strong, or Swiss franc, for instance, is very strong. You know, they hardly move. They, are, they always go up, etc. So sometimes you'll see that the manner in which a Swiss franc would move in the market and the manner in which a, a dollar will move will be different. Okay? So there are other factors. But the result, the result is the same here. So you see, so the equivalent of devaluation is depreciation. The equivalent of appreciation is, or, or, or revaluation is, is Look down. They are dealing with everybody. This is how powerful the financial sector, how effective the financial sector in Nigeria is, and can continue to be. So we can't, we can't ignore them in a way in terms of what it does. Household individuals on one side, business, government, the external sector. And I don't need to say more, but you, the arrows give you every explanation, yes. right? You can see each, every time it's doing, it's doing it.
Can we move on? Perhaps, yeah. So you can see here how savings and investment, moving saving to investment is actually taking place full time. So everyone there. And this is why when I talk about market being shallow or market being deep or market being liquid is important. Can you imagine all those people getting involved in the financial sector? And the financial sector is very limited. Like the, what Mr. Nasser was talking about here, there are only two commercial banks. So in a way, you could already assume here that the financial sector hasn't yet really picked up in that region, right? So it doesn't have too much in terms of the region. So can you imagine having to deal with this, with this, with this, and this? And if your financial sector is not strong enough, doesn't have enough capital, it will run out of capital anyway. So our usual thing, just a description here in case you still want to know what is the fashion market. It's a market for exchange of capital and credit in the economy. That's what I call a, 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 a financial market. It's a mechanism that allows buyers and sellers of financial securities, commodities, and other fungible types of assets to transact at low transaction cost and at prices that reflect the efficient market. What I mean by efficient market means that it is very efficient. You, in the economy, in the, in the market jargon, it talks that you are working at optimal, optimal, or it's parity to optimality. But don't worry about that for the moment. That's a little too, too, too detailed for you. But the most important one is financial market facilitate the raising of capital in the capital markets transfer of risk in the derivative market, and perform international trade in the currency markets. So all sorts of market are all financial markets, right? Already you can see here, we're talking about many, many, many markets. So we can divide them into four later. What else can I say here? It's about <coughs> evolution how banks can become very effective over time. I'll leave that for the moment. Obviously, why do you need a financial market or why is it evolving? Because of Nigeria's needs. Don't think that people have developed the Nigerian financial market just because they like it, no. Because there was a demand. There was a demand pretty obvious in Nigeria. Nigeria was growing, Nigeria was developing, and um, Therefore, they needed to provide, to supply those services, right? So this is what we talk about, the growth in the financial innovation, the growth in financial products, or because of demand. Now I'll ask you a question. In the same way that when you go to a market, to a supermarket, you might have seen that there are new products coming in. We don't expect that the consumer is going to buy it, right? I don't know whether you've noticed it. But sometimes you go three months down the line, you see the market has uh, the product has disappeared, and maybe you had to take a bit once or twice. And you like to, but then you say, "Wait, what is that? Why have you stopped stocking this?" this? And then what is the supermarket going to tell you? Oh, yeah. madam, because there was no demand. There's no moving markets. There was no appetite for that. Maybe it was it never picked up. So if there is a demand. The market is always going to make it available to you, right? So this is why here in the financial market, treat it like any market that we know. So the reason why you see they're creating new instrument, new instrument, new instrument, is because those instruments are popular. Sometimes they are very good, the financial market is very good at creating instruments. They are called, this is called financial engineering. This is the, the term you use, financial engineering. They engineer new product and they sell it to you. This is this mortgage back, asset back, uh, securities, ABS or mortgage backed securities. Do you remember that? No. On day one, I was telling you, uh, securities, mortgage back. So this was created, they created it. The financial engineers created something for them to sell. But on a, on a more local name here, you have a local level here in Nigeria, you're going to see new products will always come on the market. And sometimes new type of current and new type of accounts because they want to give you something. They say, well, put this money, you're going to get this type of interest. So these are traditional. But sometimes they will give you product or you tell some facilities yeah. also. Yes. All that, exactly. That's also. They know how they know. Yes. 
evaluation form and then certificates and all this type of thing that's going to happen which I don't know what time it's going to be so that's the easiest one but before we arrive there then we have to work it out so I have a couple of discussions like I wanted to discuss a little bit uh, active some of those documents that you have just to see for example how those analysis take place so I was in particular going to look at this article 4 where the analysis is very well structured logical so we're just going to have a debate, discussions about it. So that's number one. I was going to talk a little bit about the role of parliament and to explain the type of analysis that is done, the types of what the oversight, etc. But that may not necessarily take a lot. 
And then we, it's open in terms of what you want to discuss. So give some food for thought in terms of that. We don't even have anything to discuss, we don't need to discuss it. But we have the time to do that. But I'm also aware that uh, Mr. Nasser was saying that we need to, if, we, if we're really stretching it, I don't need to stretch it myself, but I've told you already what is my plan. But it's up to you what time we finish. But we need to finish because we need, you need to go. Well, we all need to go. I'm taking the plane tomorrow anyway, so uh, not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Um, so, um, and you have to travel back home. So I think the latest time we've been given is like 4 o'clock. Uh, or 12. Yeah, that's why I wanted to make an announcement. We we'll start ending by 8 a.m. Right, okay. Well, that's perfect. I think everybody should be happy with that. Right? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Okay?